Greetings to you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, this is Mazuma Kenneth once again, and I want to appreciate every one of you for being good students and for choosing to be Berenians in the sense of you going back to the scriptures to prove everything that is being communicated or said on this program. So today I want us to look at what the Bible says about dreams and visions. What the Bible says about dreams and visions. Now this is a a teaching that comes into respond to some of the common questions that today tend to appear in our born again churches and not only our born again churches but in so many denominations there are a lot of different things that have been shared uh, and people are actually exalting their dreams and visions above that which is written but let us see what does the bible say concerning the issue of dreams and visions. I know this might not be uh, it all, so I would call it a simple expose concerning this particular thing, but I know there are some things that we are going to touch on that are very hopeful. The first thing to consider is knowing what a dream is. The simple definition of a dream is basically a story that is communicated in a picture that takes place when you are asleep. When an individual is asleep in the night, something in form of what we call a story is being actually communicated in form of what we call a picture. So the other thing that is also very important that we can consider as far as this is concerned is that uh, dreams include a lot of different things. They can include what we call a day's activity. They can also occur due to some physical disorder. Uh, and they can also occur because someone has had some uh, experience or some time in what we call anxiety or what we call stress. So there are so many th things that can cause dreams basically to occur. One of it we are saying it can include uh, the day's activity. They can also include things to do with uh, anxiety or stress can also bring it. And then uh, there's a number of different things when you go into the book of uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 5. If we consider it, this is what it says in Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and uh, verse is 3. It says, For a dream cometh through multitude of business, and a foolish voice is known by a multitude of words. That's the same thing we see in verse 7. It says, For in a multitude of dreams and in many words there are also diverse di vanities, but fear you, God. So daily activity can be the main thing. That is why it is always very good for us to occupy our mind with the word of God. That doesn't mean that you won't actually have some other thing come through. But that is the best way to protect and to guard your mind from anything that you may seem not to basically do what understand. So this is actually a serious caution to those who think that all our dreams and visions in one or the other, they come from God. Why? Because what I'm going to show you from the scripture is that uh, there are even other people who are not believers that received actually what we call dreams and visions. But when we talk about a vision, a vision is something that actually, for it it happens when you are awake and you are able to see something real, but in one or the other, you also become a participant in what you are seeing. Just like you see John the Revelator in the book of Revelation. And uh, many of the visions in the Bible are described in form of a symbolism. They always point to particular things all together so that is something that we need to understand a dream an individual is actually asleep but actually what we call a vision you are awake but you are able to see something real but in one or the other you are also able to participate and we are taking example from a john the revelator everything we see the angels taking him here and there it was all a vision he was in the spirit and was able to see a number of things happening chronologically in a particular order then the other thing that is also very good for us to know is that um, the number of different revelations that are being revealed unto us but let us consider the common example where people always go to when they talk about dreams that is the book of job chapter 33 using verses 14 it says for god speaketh once yes thrice yet a man perceiveth not verses are 15 in a dream in a vision of night when deep sleep falleth upon men in slumbering upon the bed so this is a scripture where 
most people always go to when they talk about dreams and visions. But one thing we need to understand that the revelation of God in Job's time was not complete. This should not be used actually as a standard for us today. We have the Bible. So that's why when we, we cross check to the New Testament, you'll see a different story. All we are saying that the revelation of God in Job's day was not complete. And that's why we are saying our standard today is the scriptures. That's why 1 Corinthians 4, 6 says that we should not exalt any man above that which is what? Which is written. If we exalt any man above that which is written, we shall go wrong. And then another thing that we need also to discover that even before we come into the, into the New Testament, most people that would receive different things to do with visions and dreams, not all of these dreams were actually coming from God. No, uh, the Bible shows us that uh, some people would receive things that were not basically coming from the Lord because one thing that people don't know is that the devil is also capable of doing and giving people particular visions. But now that one we are going to also look at it very carefully. But from Adam to Noah, no one had dreams or visions in the sense of a true men of God. None of them had it. Even Moses and Aaron and Joshua did not. Even the apostles had no dreams, but had few visions. Like I'm going to show you that much of what they saw was in form of visions, but uh, there were not that very many and dreams were not there. And then next time, maybe I'll talk about the issue uh, of the book of Joe chapter 2 and uh, Acts chapter 2, 16 to 17, where people pick up the issue to do with our dwelling so much on dreams and then we shall also consider it but majority of the people in the old testament they encountered the word of god by revelation i want to give you an example from the book of numbers the book of numbers chapter 12 chapter 12 verses 5 this is what it says it says the lord came down in the pillar of the cloud and stood in the door of the tabernacle and called aaron and miriam and they both came forth verse 6 and he said hear now my words if there be a prophet among you, listen, if there be a prophet among you, I the Lord will make myself known unto him in a vision, and I will speak unto him in a dream. As far as Old Testament is concerned, the Bible is saying that if there is any person among you in one or the other that says, I have been called of the Lord, God will give him a dream, God will give him a vision. But now consider verses 7. My servant Moses is not so, who is faithful in all my house. Verses 8. With him I will speak mouth to mouth, even apparently, not in dark speeches, meaning that visions and dreams are dark speeches, and similitude of the Lord shall behold. Wherefore then, were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? Now, there was no prophet among them that dreamed. There was no prophet among them that dreamed. Because they had a number of uh, false prophets that were basically doing a lot of dreaming. And the Bible calls them dreamers in Deuteronomy chapter uh, 13. When you read it carefully. So, God showed the people how they needed to listen to Moses' words as God is chosen leader. That is why Moses was given the right of writing over 603 laws, but the 10 were written by the finger of the Lord. That warning, you know it. Let me give you something here in Deuteronomy 13, not to take it for as a, on, a, on a surface value. It says in Deuteronomy 13, 1, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth a sign or wonder, and the sign or wonder cometh unto pass, wherefore he speaketh unto you, saying, Let us go after other gods which you have not known, let us serve them. Verses 3, you shall not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. In fact, the Lord was calling them the dreamer of dreams. However, in the New Testament, the word of God came to actually to people like uh, Carrier, the father of John the Baptist. But what I want to show you is that uh, in the Old Testament, the word was known to them as divine wisdom. In the Old Testament, the word was known to them as a divine wisdom. However, in the New Testament, what we have is what we call the Logos. Actually, Jesus himself, the word which was in the beginning, it put on what we call flesh. 
all people in the Old Testament that had the word of the Lord come to them, they had an encounter with a pre-incarnate Christ, what we commonly call in a theological term the Christophany of Christ. He appeared to them in form of what we normally know in the Old Testament as what we call the angel of the Lord. Actually, in some place when you consider, consider like 1 Corinthians 10, Paul makes it very clear in chapter 10 by telling them something very important. Oh, and all did drink from the same spiritual rock. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was Christ. So they encountered what we call a Christophany or what we call the pre-incarnate Christ. God did this in the past. But in the New Testament, after the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ, we actually operate in a different setup. That is why when you look at Hebrews chapter 1, this is what the scriptures tell us that we need to pay close attention to. God who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in the tempers unto the fathers by the prophets. That was the order in the Old Testament. But the New Testament, or in these last days, he has spoken unto us by his son so jesus is the final speaking of god and jesus's word is more superior than any vision than any dream so we see also that dreams were still in operation during the four gospel time let us consider an example here and now remember all of that is actually a pre-cross this is what it says matthew 120 but while well he thought this is joseph but while well he thought on these things Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, you son of David, fear not, take unto you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy is of the Holy Ghost. The other place we can go to is uh, Matthew two twelve. Matthew two twelve. This is what it says: And being warned of God in a dream that they should do not return to Herod, they departed into their own country. They departed into their own country another way. So, during the time of the four gospel dispensations. There was provision for a number of things uh, to do with dreams, and this involved giving clear instructions. But today, God teaches all ministers, all believers, through the given message that is within the scriptures. That is why in 2 Timothy 2.15, Paul says to Timothy, Study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Why? Today we have a full canon from Old Testament to the New Testament. What we have in scripture is enough. That is why Romans 1.17 says that just shall live by faith. The same is repeated in Hebrews 10 37 to 39. That just shall live by faith. The same is written in 2 Corinthians 5, 6 to 7. We don't walk by sight but we walk by faith. And the same is true in Hebrews 11.6. The Bible says that those who do not walk by faith they do not please the lord so but the ones who walk by faith they please the lord so faith holds god's word we are supposed to hold on to god's word because any person holding to anything to do with extra spiritual activity to receive instruction or a revelation uh, that would basically mean that you don't see the sufficiency of the scriptures right now that does not mean that god cannot give you a dream that does not mean that god cannot give you a vision it is all possible but the scripture as far as the new testament is concerned it puts much concentration on what we have in the scripture that is why mature new testament believers live by faith not by sight not by signs not by visions that's the bible order and if we do not follow that, it is because uh, we are not actually biblically balanced. There's a warning here in the book of uh, Jeremiah 14, 14. This is what it says in 14, 14. Then the Lord said unto me, Prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spoke unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination and a thing of nothing and deceit of their heart. So we are saying mature New Testament believers, they live by faith, not by sight, not by signs, not by visions. What we have in the scriptures, if it is not enough for you, you are going to be deceived by any other thing. Now, the vision and dreams in the Bible were given also to specific people for a particular purpose. Not every person in the Bible were receiving what we call dreams and visions. No. Why? Because within the dream or the vision, 
particular instruction had to be carried. They carried what we call a particular instruction. Which instruction had to be done what followed. You see that? So not everyone. So they were all important. The individuals that God would give the dreams. The individuals that God would allow to have the visions. Those were people in one or the other. That actually God uh, used for a particular plan as far as uh, the nation of Israel is concerned and the church. So it's also important to note that all who received the direct revelation from God were not all prophets or believers. And this is something today people are not very aware of. The scripture shows us that not every individual that received what we call a dream or a vision was basically a person that was God-fearing. There is a man that is known as Abimelech. If you look at Genesis chapter 20 and verse 3, the Bible says, And God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said unto him, Behold, you are but a dead man, for the woman which you have taken, for she is a man's wife. So Abimelech was not a believer. That is why it is also true. People who are disguising themselves as Christians, they can have dreams coming from another source. And so that's another thing that we need to pay close attention to. You also know during the time of uh, Joseph in Genesis 40, 41, if we may consider Genesis 41, verses uh, 8, this is what it says. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and called for all magicians of Egypt, and all the wise men, therefore, and Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. So the message of God was also given to different individuals. He would appear to, to the unbelievers like uh, Abimelech, like even Pharaoh. God actually allowed some of the things actually to happen. And the same thing you remember in the book of uh, Daniel, if we may consider Daniel 2. And the verse is three. This is what it says. And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. So not all that received dreams and visions were believers. That's why First John chapter 4 tells us, test to see all things, to see if they are true. Just because someone received a dream or vision does not mean it is from God. So testing has to be there. And the same thing is true in the book of uh, First Thessalonians. If we may consider First Thessalonians chapter 5 and the verse is uh, 21. This is what it says. It says, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. Prove all things, hold fast that which is good. So testing has to be there. Why? Because Satan can also give a dream or a vision. Some people think that since the devil fell and maybe uh, uh, because he rebelled, that uh, whatever he had, the Lord took away from it. But everything that was given unto him, he still has it today. I want to give you a typical example of showing you that it is possible that devil can give a vision. Take an example of Luke. Luke chapter 4 verses 5. This is Jesus when he was tempted of the devil. The Bible says, And the devil taking him up into a high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. In a moment of time. It's the same thing to do with a vision. So he's much able to do that. When he was trying to deceive Jesus, he gave actually a vision to Jesus so that he could tempt him. That is why we need to test and prove all things. The Bible actually guides us from all of these things. It's only that sometimes people are not just taking the Bible warnings very seriously, but the Bible warns us about all things. Now, another thing during the time of uh, uh, when Jesus was, was brought before Pilate, there are a number of things that basically happened. You know very well in uh, Matthew 27, 16 to 19, the wife of Pilate actually had uh, a dream. And the dream was to leave Jesus as an innocent man. But remember what had brought Jesus. That is why we are saying that the devil can also come through your mind in a time of rest. So it depends what is the main thing behind this. And when she had that dream, she came to Pilate telling him, that it was not right for Jesus to actually be crucified. But remember that devil wanted to stop the crucifixion to happen. Had Jesus not gone to the cross, would not have had a fulfillment of Second Corinthians 5.21. Him who knew no sin was made sin, 
So Jesus had to go upon the cross of Calvary. And remember our wage of sin would not be paid by any other person other than Christ. And remember John 1 29. John said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So the woman, of course, she had a dream. But the dream was not coming from God. The dream was not coming from God. Why? Because the dream was suggesting that Baraba should be the one that would be retained. And actually Jesus had to be released in one way or the other. But one thing we get to know very much is that the devil is very subtle in everything he does. He does things in secret. So the cross was a serious issue that could not be ignored. The new age people, for them they say how you have a dream and a vision. They talk about imaginations. What are you able to see? That's why they actually uh, emphasize issues of sitting postures that allow an individual to be in a resting mood so that they can connect with a number of different things. You see that so we need to see the word of god as the pillar as actually a canon that we can hold on to because everything god wanted to speak to us is within the book that is why an individual who does not take the word of god very seriously is an individual that is going to be deceived remember there is no true prophet who used visualization but the new age doctrine encourages people to use what we call visualization where you sit there and envision and i've also heard of uh, people today going to what we call a born again ministries and they teach them how actually to have a uh, to prophesy where in the scripture do you see where they are teaching people to learn how to prophesy so they give them techniques to get visions from god however the word discourages all of those particular things I want to show you something here from the book of uh, the book of Jeremiah chapter 42 and the verse is uh, 7. It says, And it came to pass after 10 days that the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. One thing that you understand here is that the word of the Lord would come to people, but people are not sitting there saying, Lord, can you please speak to me? Lord, speak to me. Lord, speak to me. Which direction can I face? This is what is happening today. In each dream and vision, God himself initiated. So, all things to do with our dreams and visions, they were initiated by God, but they were never in one or the other pursued by the recipient. Today, in most Christian schools, like I've already said in seminars, they tell people to visualize. Even Thomas, who doubted, had to wait. That is what the Bible teaches us. When you study John chapter 20, verses 24 to 28, when Thomas was doubting about the resurrection of Christ, he waited, and as he waited, the Lord revealed himself to him. Let me just show you the last part of it here. In John chapter 20, let us consider verses uh, 26. After eight days, again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. So what we are saying, in each dream and vision, God himself initiated. And those dreams and visions, they were never pursued by the person. However, God himself initiated. It's something we need to learn. However, today the New Age Doctrine is showing people that visualization is one of the more powerful way of actually having a dream or having God talking to you. But remember, visualization is one of the powerful way of how actually occult people actually use for a number of different things that contradict scriptures. It is something that is to do with a metaphysical practice of forming a mental image in the mind by imagination and desires of the heart to change one's reality. That's why we need to be careful of people's books like uh, a man known as uh, Richard Foster, David Yongocho, uh, Jesse Duplantis, all of those people teach a number of different things which are not true. If we are not careful enough and we go after a number of different things that distort the scriptures, we are going to be deceived. That's why I'm saying, if we are not careful, experiences like dreams can replace the word. As in the day of Jeremiah, in the day of Jeremiah, there were so many dreamers having this, having that. And the Bible keeps warning us that their history is something that we can learn from so that we don't repeat the same mistake. You consider Jeremiah 23, 25. This is what it says. And I have heard what the prophet said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. God resents it. Look at 26. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yes, they are prophets of deceit, 
of their own hearts. So if we are not careful, experiences like dreams, like actually visualizations, like uh, a lot of these uh, new age uh, kind of practices, they will in one or the other replace the word of God. So this has not changed in our time. There are people who are still seeking and actually saying God has spoken, yet the Lord has not spoken unto them. The same is true when you look at Jeremiah 23, 28. Bible says this in verses 28, the prophet that has a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord. The Bible puts more concentration, more focus on preaching of the word. Why? I have already told you that we have a complete canon and I have already told you that the last speaking of God is Christ himself. And that is why when Timothy is being told to be a very good minister, they tell him to study scriptures. That's the same thing you see in First Timothy 3.14 to 15. Meditate in these things. That is one thing that Paul actually told him to make sure that he continues in that line. Verse 30, verse 29 of Jeremiah 23. And if not my word like, is not my word like, like a fire, saith the Lord, like a hammer that breaketh the rock in peace, 30. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that still my words everyone from his neighbor. So they keep on doing a lot of different things. Instead of focusing on what we call expository teaching, real explanation of scriptures to people, they are actually resorting to preaching what we call experiences and what we call the last and their own lasts. But the Bible says that pattern should not be followed. Let us also use an example from Jeremiah 29 verses 8. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you, neither hearken to your dreams which you cause to be dreamed. Verses 9. For they prophesy falsely unto you in my name, and I have not sent them, saith the Lord. This is a common notion today. In fact, today they are holding days. Every Tuesday, there is prophecy day. Every Tuesday, people are going to prophesy. Every Friday, every Thursday, every Monday, every Wednesday. So days are being given. Sunday, don't miss your prophecy. This Sunday, don't miss. Don't miss. The Lord has a word for you. But when you look into the Bible term, it was so rare for God to have a word for a particular individual. It would maybe be a word given to a king for an entire nation. Hardly will you find God always giving a communication that comes to a particular individual by himself. That was not a common notion. And the same thing the Bible discourages in the book of Ezekiel 13. Ezekiel 13 verses 2. This is what it says. Son of man, prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy and say, you unto them prophesy out of their own hearts. Hear you the word of the Lord. They are warning them since from that time. Verses 4. Thus says the Lord God, Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirits and have seen nothing. And today we have a number of those ones who are fools that have seen nothing, but they are pretending as if God has shown them something. The Bible calls them fools. Verses 4. It says, O Israel, your prophets are like foxes in the desert. Verses 5. You have not gone up into the gaps, neither made you the hedge for the house of Israel, to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. 6. For they have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord has not sent them. And they made others to hope that they would confirm the word. They saw nothing. They pretend that they have seen something. But it doesn't come from God, but out of their own imagination and their hearts. Does it mean that God does not speak to us? That's not what we are saying. He does still speak today to us. He can do whatever. Remember, he's able to do whatever he wants. But he does not impart new doctrines. If there is a vision, if there is a dream, all of those will agree with what is already written. We test everything by scriptures. So if any person's dream goes beyond that which is written, we refute it, we actually reject it. Why? Because God's word is actually the surgical instrument that we use for right dividing of all the things that we don't understand. New Testament after the book of Acts onward does not mention any revelation by dreams. If you see into the book of Acts, that is where you see maybe where 
Paul had gone somewhere and the Lord showed him just like actually in the book of uh, Acts chapter 16. Paul had actually uh, a dream, a man in Macedonia calling him and telling him come unto us. But now what we want to understand very well is that after the book of Acts and putting the book of Revelation aside, there wasn't any new revelations that were actually shown. Whenever the vision would come, it was related to the doctrine or instruction and connected to actually an individual who was an apostle, not any job law person. I have even done a teaching that refutes the idea which says that in the book of Acts that all believers were doing signs and wonders. There are two categories that did the signs and wonders. The apostles that were chosen of the Lord and what we call the apostolic legates, people that were close to the apostles like Stephen and actually people of that sort, but not everyone. Take an example of Acts chapter 9 verse 36. When Dorcas died, the believers were there, but they could not resurrect her. They called for Peter because he was nearby. These are things that need to be put in order. And one other individual we see is Ananias, the man that God used. But it was something true. When God called him to go and minister to Paul, it was indeed true that Paul was knocked. Paul had encountered the Lord. But hardly do you see these things actually very common. That's why I am saying none of them was actually a common day-to-day -day occurrence in the term of the apostles that each and every time they were having visions and dreams. And that is why we are saying that whenever any vision would come, it was related to doctrine, to instruction, or actually to a particular apostle that the Lord wanted to fulfill something with that particular apostle. The Lord was always there to encourage his apostles on the journeys that he sent them on. If you study Acts 27, see that uh, on several occasions, Paul was encouraged by the angel of the Lord. So that is very important. Then the other thing is, uh, you also see a vision in Acts where Peter was called to go to minister into the house of Cornelius. And uh, before also actually that one happened, he had a vision where he saw a number of different animals actually manifesting on uh, what appeared to be like a, a white sheet. And a voice came to him after saying that he was angry, son of man, eat. And uh, Peter began not wanting to eat, say, Lord, I cannot eat all of those things, for it is known unto me those things are unclean. But one thing we should also understand that if God meant that a vision would come through for a particular individual, there was a particular purpose as to why the Lord allowed it to happen. For the case of Peter, what we know, if you've read the scriptures very well, you see that Peter himself was an individual that needed to be helped to know that we are no longer living in the Old Testament where they were considering some animals unclean. But now he was being shown that, you know, if God could accept the animals that were once unclean, he has also accepted the Gentiles because he was on his journey to the house of Cornelius. So if God can have animals clean, then how about the Gentiles? So it was a preparation for Peter before he goes to the house of Cornelius to know that there is a transition from Old Testament to the New Testament. So the New Testament visions also had a purpose and they were pointing to something actually more real than someone just having a goosebumps and that oh, I always have dreams, I always have a vision. No, that was not the main case. I want to conclude something that is very important as far as something that I left out to show you that uh, much as there were so many dreams that came through in the Old Testament, when God would give dreams to the ungodly men, one thing that we need to understand because first of all, I showed you people that had dreams come through for them like uh, I talked about Abimelech, I talked about Pharaoh. Look at uh, all those guys who are ungodly men. But when they had dreams, more specifically when you consider Nebuchadnezzar, you consider also Pharaoh, you consider Abimelech, every time they would have those dreams coming to them from God, it took a godly man to interpret those dreams to them. It took a godly man to interpret those dreams for them. I want to give you an example so that we are balanced in what we are saying. When you consider Genesis 41 and verses 26, it says in Genesis 41 26, The seven good kin are seven years, and the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one, 27. And the seven thin and ill favored kin that came up after them are seven years, and the seven empty years blasted within the east wind 
shall be seven years of famine verses 28 this is the thing which i have spoken unto pharaoh what god is about to do he showeth unto pharaoh so the person interpreting the dream of pharaoh is none other than joseph a godly man showing pharaoh what would basically do what would happen now the commonness of all this is still uh, with the example that we all also know in uh, if we may also consider another one from daniel a book of daniel if we consider daniel chapter 2 and verses uh, 26 this is what we get it says and the king answered and said to daniel whose name was Belshazzar, are you able to make known unto me the dream which i have seen and and the interpretation thereof now look at verse 26 and daniel answered in the presence of the king and said the secret which the king has demanded cannot the wise men and the astrologers and the magicians and the soothsayers show unto the king 28 but there is a god in heaven that revealeth the secrets and maketh to the king nabucodonosor what shall be in the latter days your dream and vision of your head upon your bed are these verses 29 as for you o king your thoughts came into your mind upon your bed what should come to pass hereafter and he that revealeth secret maketh known unto you what shall come unto pass 13 but as for me this secret is not revealed unto me for any wisdom that i have more than any living but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king that you might know the thoughts of your heart verse 31 O you king saw it and behold a great image this great image whose brightness was excellent stood before you and the form thereof was terrible verse 32 this image's head was of fine gold and his breast and his arms of silver and his belly and his thighs of brass 33 now his legs of iron his feet part of iron and part of clay 34 you saw it till that a stone was cut out without hands which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and broke them in pieces 35 then was the iron the clay the brass the silver the gold broken to pieces together and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors and wind and carried them away that no place was found for them and the stone that smote the image became the great mountain and he filled the whole earth 36 this is the dream we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king now that is it so today people are told to interpret their own dreams that is what you hear but let me tell you the answer of joseph is being forgotten but the answer of joseph was very simple using genesis this is what the scripture tells us verses 15 it says in genesis 41 15 and pharaoh said unto joseph i have dreamed a dream and there is none that can interpret it and i have heard say of you that you can understand a dream and interpret it verses 16 and joseph answered pharaoh saying it is not in me god shall give pharaoh an answer of peace now what we are learning it is not in us but god will give the answer of peace that is why many people have stumbled over some of these particular things because they want always to promote issues to do with that i can do all the things through christ who strengthens me that is misquoting of scripture that is going to lead you into error go back and understand the context of i can do all things through christ who strengthens me the scripture which talks about a person abasing all learning in all situations in abundance and in a in lack to continue to do what he's called to do how can you apply to each and everything god is our strength and uh, we are complete in christ colossians 2 10 if we are complete in christ we are not complete in our own ability we are complete in him we depend on him because he's the one who can give us an answer he's the one who can actually reveal all secrets i hope this actually responds to a number of your questions and i hope it is a blessing to you but let us see the importance of the the scriptures let us have actually
complete confidence in what we have in the scripture. That's why I have told you that whenever the vision would come, it was related to doctrine and instruction. And now we have said that Christ is the final speaking of God. Are we supposed to seek for visions and dreams? No. Why? Because it is God who initiated them. But we are not supposed to pursue any dream. We are not supposed to pursue any vision. Let us remain doing what he has called us to do and let his will be done in our lives. This thing of going to some school and they tell you to begin to envision things, to begin to visualize that is occultic in nature, that is new age teaching, and those are things that have in one or the other bamboozled the church. And always, Jesus is Lord. Shalom.